Hey, Dana here for Thursday, May 19th, 2016. Happy Throwback Thursday. I thought I would maybe tell a little bit of the Serious Vanity origin story today. There's many faceted parts of it, but this is kind of a cool one. Uh, the origin of my peacock feather logo. There's a real specific reason why I use a peacock feather in my logo. Um, not just because peacocks are associated with vanity. My dad has always done this artwork that I would describe as being very inspired by his heritage and organic materials. Um, he did a lot of stuff when I was, especially when I was really, really young with feathers. And we had a place. It was, if you're in the Kansas City area, it's now called The Legends. It's a big shopping area and uh, has a lot of sports arenas and things like that. But uh, out at about 104th and State Avenue, I think, or 104th in parallel, um, there was a little farm run by people I only knew as Mr. and Mrs. Bean. And I was really, really little at the time. And they had an exotic bird farm. And so you would go there and see pretty much any kind of crazy bird that you could think of. And my dad would spend the whole day, like on a Saturday, in whatever little coop he was picking up the feathers in. I would spend the day with these lovely people who would tell me all about every bird they have. And I mean, you went inside their house and their dining room had incubators in it. And so you could like pet the little baby chicks and things. I mean, it was, it was like a child's dream come true if you were a gentle child that loved animals, which I absolutely was. And they had several peacocks. Usually we were greeted with them when we were on our way there. Uh, it was a very rural road to get to their house. And these, you know, phoenixes would fly alongside my dad's pickup truck, like with us, like as we went. And I mean, the, the sound that they make, if you've heard any of my branding music, one of their calls is in it. And if you've ever called 888-569-8882, which is my business line, you will hear it in my messaging and <laughs> my on hold music and stuff. It's probably not what a lot of people would describe as a beautiful bird call. And it's probably, to anyone who doesn't know me, an odd choice to include in my branding music. But if you do know me, then it's like, okay, yeah, that's Dana. So I have really vivid memories of being about the same height as these birds. And they would be standing in the driveway of these people's house. And I remember one time specifically Mrs. Bean explaining to me how you can tell the age of a peacock by the eyes on the feathers. Did I really retain that knowledge? No, <laughs> but it, I remember her explaining it to me. But I just always thought of them as being these wonderful, friendly creatures because I would literally just follow them around and try and hug them. And <laughs> they would just run just slightly faster than me so that. I did not get them to hug them, uh, but it, it was nice that they didn't turn around and bite me. I get that now that that was probably a sign that uh, they were much kinder birds than like the ostrich would have been. I was not allowed to walk around and try and hug it, but I do remember getting to see the pen where it was kept and the nest with the giant eggs in it and just really fantastic things. Every child should have memories like that. It was magical. But also, my paternal grandparents died when I was very, very young, and that was sort of um, a life-changing thing for me, um, very defining moment. Uh, that lost them both within like a year and a half uh, when I was not quite school-aged, and much of my life has been spent missing the experiences that I would have had with them. Even though I know that they've been with me, I would have just loved to have had like one time of like sitting at a kitchen table and having a conversation with them, like as adult people. And you're very, very lucky if you get to do that. Some of us don't get even close to that with these wonderful, interesting, amazing people that are gone so early. But where they are buried at, there was at one point Probably a couple of years after the experience with Mr. and Mrs. Bean, someone who owned the property 
that was next to the cemetery at the time also kept a strange combination of exotic birds and police dogs. <laughs> and that doesn't seem like it would really go well together, but certainly nobody went on the property and messed with the birds. But it wasn't uncommon to go to the cemetery and there would just be peacocks in the trees or peacocks just walking. It's a very old cemetery, so you've got the really thin little driveways uh, that's just barely enough room for one car. And there would just be a peacock just walking around. So I kind of grew up thinking that peacocks were just kind of my friends. You know, they were just always everywhere that was kind of important. Eventually, there wasn't that bird farm next to the cemetery. So that experience kind of faded away. You know, I would go to the zoo or something and it would be neat to see peacocks. But there wasn't like uh, that experience where there was the connection with them. For several decades. Around 2011, um, some things started happening in my life that were really out of my control. And it was around that time that peacock stuff just kind of like started appearing in my life again. It's hard to explain, but it just started to become a thing. So I kind of took a couple of years where I was just working for clients all the time and I really kind of left my own personal branding and what business direction I was going to go in. I kind of put that to the side for a little bit and it was probably around 2013 that I was ready to really kind of dive in and make something new. And that imagery really came back to me hardcore. By that time, it was just like a normal thing that, oh, there's a peacock thing, you know? <laughs> and so it, it's like I got the message. So I played around with a couple of different ideas with it, but everything came together for the very kind of simple logo that I have now. I'm really satisfied with it. I'm satisfied with what it represents in my business and what it kind of represents in my life. What kind of reminded me of it for today you know, I live in Kansas City, Kansas, so it's not the most major city on the map. And so we probably get a little bit of things on our news that maybe bigger cities do not have. But periodically, there's just a peacock that will show up somewhere in the metro area. And it'll be on the news because some homeowner like can't get rid of it or the police are trying to chase it down. And I guess that's what happened yesterday. You know, I always get a phone call from my dad that says, your peacock is over at, you know, because <laughs> I just have told him for years that I know one will just show up one day. That's all I'm waiting for is just I'll go outside one day and it'll be in the yard. I've had a wild turkey twice now. I've had a bald eagle I've had an array of hawks and falcons and crows that are always at my house, but I'm waiting for my peacock because definitely it's the sign that always keeps coming back to me. It To me, it just sort of represents this tie between the sort of mythology and spirituality that I love and that I've always studied and the experience that I've had over the last several years that's very transformational, sort of that phoenix rising from the flames crap, <laughs> and um, you know, for lack of a better way to say it, um, because that's kind of what they're like. So there you have it. That's the story of the peacock. Always feel free, if you're ever on my wall of the Serious Vanity Facebook page or my personal page or my Twitter, or whatever it is, just post me a picture of a peacock periodically and just tell me it's on the way. It's coming uh, because I love it and I just always love seeing it. It's my thing. So anyway, there you go, guys. There's the big story. Have a great Throwback Thursday and I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>